I hope you achieved and even exceeded your year-end goals. And I hope this channel was a part of your success. In this video, we'll be hearing from you as to what worked, what didn't, and what lessons you learned and what you want to share with others. Sit tight as we hear from you. As October approached, I felt a burden to help those of you who indicated a strong desire to do well at year end but needed some next steps in how to implement an effective strategy. Well, 12 weeks later and 12 videos later, the text, notes, and emails started rolling in and they were fun to read. There was Pierre from a counseling ministry who stated your materials helped us so much with our year end program and appeal letter. We connected so deeply with so many people that we knocked it out of the park. Then there was Mike, a state director of a sports ministry who said, I have personally crafted much of my year-end efforts around your DES videos and have shared them with our team as well. And Jonathan, a local leader in a youth organization, expresses feelings this way. I truly cherish your ability to be honest while simultaneously show you are for me. And then there's Brian from a small startup youth organization called Whisper, who laid out for me his entire strategy at year end so that others could learn from his successes and even his mistakes. Brian shared, this past year, we had our most successful end of year ever. This would not have happened if we wouldn't have followed your plan and wisdom. It was hard work getting our letter ready to send earlier than usual. He got it out in early November rather than early December and crafting a personal specific ask for each of our top 20% of our donors. He continued, then I called most of them to follow up and the results were unreal. Your process is simple but not easy. More importantly, it works and produced results. That led us to lesson number one. In any successful campaign, not just a year end, separate your donor base into manageable chunks or groups. Brian states, we chose two levels, 20% and 80%. Our goal for the 80% was to collectively raise 30,000 through a direct mail letter. Then we asked the 20% with a personal letter and ask. We followed up the 20% with a personal ask. In the end, we raised more than $47,000, more than ever for our organization during this time of year. What a reward for the fruits of our labor. I think we had around 30 donors in all who participated. Segregating your list makes it much more manageable and makes the task less daunting. If you can send a letter to everyone, that's the best plan. But if all you can do is get a personal letter to your critical few or your higher end donors, that's a major accomplishment. Lesson number two, use a match to motivate and stimulate others to give. One leader, John, who employed the year end strategy to help him reach his goal of $60,000 for his own personal support, which included some large medical expenses. He shared, your strategy encouraged me to personally call five current partners and ask them to give $5,000 to have $25,000 for a matching gift. To my surprise, two instead gave $15,000, one gave $5,000 and two gave $2,500. That was $40,000 in matching money. I was amazed at how many of those individuals decided to give more to accelerate the giving of others, John shared. Wait until you hear how much John actually raised. I'll save that for later. Brian from Whisper also used leverage giving as according to him, I asked seven individuals to give $10,000 and at least one did so with others giving six, five, and two others giving 3,000, definitely more than they had ever given in the past. It may seem scary to pick up the phone and ask current or even new, do new donors to give a gift of perhaps the largest gift they've ever given, but you have not because you ask not. And as the great philosopher and Hockey Hall of Famer, Wayne Gretzky is quoted as saying, you miss 100% of the shots you don't take. Lesson number three, Use a letter to everyone, sharing the opportunity to partner. As Pierre mentioned earlier, shared with me, your philosophy of friend raising versus fundraising was invaluable. They crafted a personal letter for their large donors and sent a dear friend letter to the rest. Lori from an organization combating human trafficking shared, it's often difficult to put into writing 
what we hope to accomplish with the donor's money. But after listening to your video, How to Write a Compelling Year-End Letter, I was able to formulate a letter that not only expressed our mission and strategies, but had an exciting opportunity, and it was our best appeal letter ever. Having a compelling hook that draws the reader into the letter, an exciting story of a life that was changed by the organization, specifics of how your programs and projects work, and a captivating and appealing opportunity will make for a successful letter. Lesson number four, follow up your letter with a phone call or visit. As Margie from a social services organization expressed, the phone call made the difference. Prior to this year, we never called to follow up with the letter. She wrote, I don't know why, perhaps I knew a call would be intimidating, but we did it this year and saw results like never before. Brian of Whisper shared, after we sent a letter to the 80%, I called some of them as well. Our $30,000 goal was met so quickly that we increased it to 60,000. It was challenging but effective. I mentioned I'd tell you how much John raised. Well, remember he hoped to raise 60000 for his personal support? He ended up making phone calls and raised over $77,000. Needless to say, he was very thankful for God's provision and our advice. For most nonprofits, following up with a phone call or a visit is a game changer. It makes all the difference in the world. I've quoted numbers in my other videos, but a letter alone usually yields a response of between 2 and 8%. Adding a phone call will increase that to 30%, and a visit will increase the response to 50%. There is almost nothing more valuable in of any funding campaign than to call or visit a current or potential donor. Lesson number five. Send a thank you note immediately and report on how the gift was used six months later. Responding promptly to a gift from a partner or donor is one of the most important things that you can do to express appreciation. It shows respect and honor to the gift and the person who gave the gift. It is recommended that a note or email or a letter go out 24 hours after receiving the gift. I call that out the door in 24. If I know I might be late getting the thank you note out, I'll send a text or an email or leave a voicemail. Even if the donor or partner says, don't worry about sending me a thank you, I, I still, I still, still send it. If nothing else, it lets them know you got their gift. My wife and I sent a missionary a gift the second week of December, and by the second week of January, we still didn't have a thank you note. We reached out to see if they even had gotten our gift. That's embarrassing when the partner or donor must reach out to you. Don't let that happen. Mike, a leader of a large mission agency, responded back to my appreciation video by saying, the very timely encouragement to express our appreciation, even in the midst of a rush, is so important. I felt so burdened by your struggles to do the right things all year round to raise money, but especially at year end. I wanted to devote as much time as possible and give you the best materials available to make your year end the most successful ever. Based on your comments, texts, notes, emails and letters, and even a few phone calls, I believe we succeeded. I hope you enjoyed this recap of some who succeeded and even exceeded at year end. Not everyone succeeded in every area. Brian, who I highlighted earlier, would admit he dropped the ball when it came to timely thank you notes. He didn't get thank you notes out until mid-January, but so many, like Brian, felt they have really raised the bar and did better than ever before and accomplished much through employing sound methods and practices. When I reached out to Brian for feedback on the thank you process, he said, thanks for asking, keep pressing me. I want to get this right and build great habits now. I believe that reflects the feelings of you and many of our viewers. Keep doing things right and eventually they'll become second nature. I hope you found this video helpful. If you aren't already a subscriber, please hit the subscribe button and click the all bell to be notified when the next video is released. Remember, if you have fundraising questions, submit them on Twitter at DevFStrats and use the hashtag Jim and Java. On Instagram, where we have a growing audience, you can reach me at Dev Effectiveness Strategies and also check out our Thursday morning tips and our Monday morning what to do this week segment. You can also reach me on email at developmenteffectivenessm at gmail.com. And as always, I wish you the best as you strive to increase your income and reach the goal of becoming fully funded. Thank you. See you in the next video.